Hello friends, welcome back to Biotech Simplified. Today we will discuss about spontaneous generation. So during the 17th century there was a great conflict regarding the spontaneous generation theory. So until the 17th century people believed that living organisms arise from non-living organisms. For example, if we take a rotting meat, the maggots arise from these meat. So this was the concept of spontaneous generation that is the living organisms arise from the non-living organisms. So the diagram that you see on the screen was an experiment done by Reddy. He did three jars. The first jar was unsealed and the second jar was sealed with a cork. Whereas the third jar, the mouth of the third jar was tied with a net. So the first jar, that is the unsealed jar, showed some presence of mangots, whereas the rest two jars did not show the presence of mangots. So this confirmed that the spontaneous theory does not happen here. So thereby, Reddy was able to reject the spontaneous theory. Another experiment was done by a John Needham, and he believed that spontaneous generation occurred. In his experiment, what he did was, he briefly boiled a broth mixture in an open container and it was allowed to cool in room temperature. He later then sealed the container. Microorganisms began to appear a few days later and this confirmed that spontaneous generation occurred. So now let us look how he did his experiment. So first, he took a culture media. He took a chicken broth with some microbial growth in them and he then boiled them. And after boiling for some time, the broth appeared clear and he allowed it to cool for some time. And after it is cooled, he sealed the mouth of the jar. And after some days, he observed some microorganisms in them. And this is why he supported the spontaneous theory. So now let us look what was the problem which occurred in his experiment that made him conclude spontaneous theory occurs. So what he did was he allowed the, his flask to cool at room temperature. So at that time the flask was in contact with the air. So this made other bacteria to come into the media and this is how his media got contaminated with bacteria. So the next experiment was done by Spallanzini, and in this experiment, what he did was he refined the Needham's experiment so that he would be able to disapprove the spontaneous generation. So what he did was he did two alterations in the John Needham's experiment. One is that he boiled it little more longer so that he was able to kill all the microorganisms that are present in them. And the second modification that he made was that he immediately capped the container. The most important experiment that disapproved the spontaneous theory was done by Louis Pasteur. So in this experiment, what he did was that he took a curved neck flask also known as swan neck flask so in this flask he took the broth from a boiled meat and the importance of a swan neck flask was that air would be able to pass through these swan neck whereas the solid particles will not be able to pass through them so these are the two experiments that is the experiment done by Spallanzani as well as the experiment done by Needham. So in the first experiment that is the experiment done by Needham what he did is that he took a broth media and then it was heated and after some time the flask was closed. So by the time the flask was open microorganisms began to grow in them but in the case of Spallanzani, what he did that he took a broth and he was he heated the broth and the flask was sealed immediately. So there were no growth in them. 
But once the cork of the flask was removed, the microorganisms began to grow in them. So the results that he got from his experiment is that the broth boiled inside the flask remained clear for one year. After that, when the neck is broken off, the broth appeared cloudy and this is due to the contamination of the microorganisms. So what he concluded was the microorganisms come from other microorganisms and there is no spontaneous generation occurring.